Stay up on the latest this hurricane season. Please subscribe for future updates. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Weather Nerds YouTube channel. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski. As always, your personal weatherman. Are you, are you ready for the weekend? I know I'm ready to have some fun this weekend. Uh, but, of course, we got to get through uh, some activity and some weather that's going to be impacting the Northeast today with the remnants of Debbie. And we're also talking about the Atlantic. Look like it's starting to get fired up here a little bit as we'll be tracking our next potential system. Of course, our next name system will be unearthed now. Now, before we get going here, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please help me out. Just all you do is hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you learn on future content. And uh, leave me a comment, as always. I do appreciate you guys' feedback. And uh, give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate your support. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the latest on the satellite, on the morning radar, I should say. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself a little bit here as we're looking at what's left of Debbie here across Pennsylvania. It looks like the center of circulation just south of the Altoona area there. And whenever you see these yellows, that's where you're getting your more your tropical downpours, kind of heavy stuff. We've had numerous flooding issues going all the way down into Georgia and numerous still watches and warnings out, which I'll show you here in a second. But uh, the, the thing that for this afternoon is once we get the daytime heating, again, tropical air mass is very buoyant. So you get some heating going in there and we could definitely fire up some thunderstorms. And it's obviously going to continue to be a tornado risk there as well. Here is the morning satellite imagery here. As you see the heavy cloud cover here across Pennsylvania, up into New York and heading up into the New England area as this continues to race off toward the north and east. It's definitely gotten picked up by the jet stream. Remember how long it just kind of lingered down here in the deep south, but uh, definitely on the move now and heading on out the rest of the country, actually looking fairly quiet here uh, for your Friday morning. So here is our target zone for severe weather. We've got the slight risk here going from New York all the way down toward Baltimore and D.C., uh, anywhere in this zone could see potential for isolated weak tornadoes in this area, as well as severe weather here for this afternoon. We've already got uh, several watches and warnings out there currently. I should say watches. You see, here's the tornado watches up currently uh, from Virginia, stretching all the way up to some portions of New York. I suspect we'll get some additional uh, watches up into New York State here later this afternoon, at least looking at the latest high-resolution model data, which I'll show you here in a second. Look at all the watches here, uh, flood watches going from South Carolina all the way up into uh, New England, into Vermont and New Hampshire. All this green, those are your flood warnings out there. So until some of these creeks and rivers get a chance to subside, those are going to stay up just a bit. But things will improve and dry out here across the mid-Atlantic states, and uh, New England will get its shot here for today. All right, let's look at the latest high-resolution model data here for today. Again, watch that timestamp there in your upper right-hand corner. As uh, we're going to watch this thing here progress here for this afternoon, what I'm going to be watching closely as we head into this afternoon, what's left of that center of circulation as this kind of moves up into New York State as we head into the afternoon hours. I'll go ahead and freeze it right about there by about 3 o'clock this afternoon. Here is the center of circulation. So you got some curvature going on in here. So here you got some heavy, heavy rains here spreading across the western portions of New York getting up toward Buffalo. And where it kind of wraps around in here, this is probably where your isolated tornadoes are going to be firing up. That's why I suspect we'll get some additional uh, tornado watches that will come up over here across New York State here for this afternoon. And this will spread across New England. Now, the heaviest rains will stay back on this part of this as this race is on, but it's definitely picking up momentum. So the flood risk not nearly as high as what it was earlier, say, the day before yesterday or so, when the system was moving slower. So let me go ahead and progress this thing here for the rest of the afternoon. As you watch this system, again, we'll be approaching the New York state line going into New Hampshire and into Massachusetts, but uh, definitely starts to decrease in intensity as the bulk of the heavier rains there kind of slides up into Canada here. And this is kind of tail end Charlie kind of coming in and through Maine and ports of New England as we head into, say, midnight for tonight going into early Saturday morning. Let's take a look at the precipitation totals. Again, looks like the heaviest of the rainfall will be targeted back here toward uh, Pennsylvania going into the western portions of New York. You're seeing three to five inches of rain in here, even so, getting close to six as we cross up into Canada here. But notice the rainfall amounts over Maine are really not bad. A little heavier up here across portions of say Vermont, New Hampshire, but uh, generally this is where the heaviest rains are going to be as this continues to race off toward the north and east. So we'll finally get some things to dry out here and we'll see things begin to get better in across areas of New England. Now, once this system's done, we've got another one we got to keep a watchful eye on here. This one is our next area of disturbed weather, which is showing a good, a good chance for development here. But the other thing I want to point out, look at all this brown haze out here. 
This is Saharan dust. It's been a problem pretty much a majority of the summer. So what this means for the system, whenever you get, the, whenever you get that kind of Saharan dust out there, it's kind of like kryptonite for these systems, that hot, dry air where the dust doesn't like it. It's going to inhibit development where we sometimes watch for these things develop out in the middle of the Atlantic. What's going to happen with this one? It's going to really come all the way across until it gets further away from this heavy dust until it approaches the Lesser Antilles. That's probably when we'll see development here as it's coming up toward Puerto Rico. Then we're going to have to watch the models and see if this big trough that's going to be coming in in the next week comes in across the eastern portion of the United States because if it does, it's going to pull it northward uh, as we go in toward the end of next week. So here is the latest seven-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center showing a 60% chance for development here as we watch this thing. Again, once it gets into about this zone, that's when it looks like things will begin to develop and it'll continue to move off toward the west and off toward the, the north. So kind of a west-northwest trajectory here on this as we go in toward next week. But once it gets up to about here, then things begin to change a little bit. Let's take a look here at the ESANS models, kind of a kind of an ensemble model of different runs here showing that this system is expected to make a turn up toward the north. High pressure ridge here. We got a, a, a looks like a bit of a trough coming in off here. So as this continues to move off in this direction as it approaches the Los Antilles and it comes into Puerto Rico because of the weakness there with our next uh, storm system coming in, it's going to get pulled up to the north. Now still look, some of these models are trending it over here a little bit closer to the Florida coast, but the majority of them have been shifting a little bit further off toward the east. It's going to go around the periphery of that high pressure system. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the latest European model here. We'll go ahead and step you through this one as well. Again, watch that timestamp in your upper right hand corner as I go ahead and put this into interactive mode here. And we're going to watch the system progress across the Atlantic. It's not going to have any development. Again, it's going to get away from that Saharan dust before it can do anything. So it'll be quiet through the weekend. And then as we get into this next week, we'll stop this here on Tuesday morning. This is where we could see the potential development of maybe a tropical depression as it gets to this point. Here's the high pressure ridge. It's really shifted off toward the east here. We got a trough in here. So what that's going to mean is it's going to kind of act like a magnet. It's going to draw it further up toward the north uh, over time because of this weakness in here. Now, if it stays further south, maybe it undercuts that trough and maybe it comes in a little bit closer to the, to the continental United States. So we've got a lot of time to watch this and these models will change. And of course, I will keep you updated every step of the way. So this is as of Tuesday. Uh, let's go ahead and continue this now beyond that day on your Tuesday uh, there on August the 13th, which happens to be my father's birthday, by the way. And as this goes ahead and moves on through, then we start getting something really starting to develop. Probably have an Ersto, an Ersto forming by the time we get into Wednesday and Thursday. And then notice it starts to get pulled off toward the north. So by the time we get to Friday afternoon, again, you got the high pressure ridge has kind of retreated a bit. Here's Ernesto here, which should be should be a tropical storm, maybe a hurricane at this point. And it looks like it's going to take a beeline heading almost due north uh, beyond that. So let's go ahead and take this fully all the way out to the end of its run here. And you can see this kind of moving up toward the north and then uh, kind of approaching up toward Maine. Looks like a pretty good strong hurricane at that point as it's moving up toward the north. Then we'll watch again a couple of these more of these tropical waves out here in the Atlantic. Now we're starting to get later in the season when you get toward August going into September. That's when things really start to get going. The average number of storms, by the way, you see in August is four. So we've got one so far. Probably going to get our second one here. So but again, as long as that wild card with that Saharan dust continues to be out in the Atlantic, ugh, it's going to be a little bit of a kryptonite for any development out there, or at least con consider it kind of a bit of an inhibitor uh, as we go through time. It could clear out. It typically does as we get later into the summer. But so far, it's definitely holding on to its own, to say the least. All right, that's your update for now. Uh, again, I appreciate you guys checking out the channel and uh, supporting us. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider it be an honor and a pleasure to have you on board this team. All you gotta do is hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And I do appreciate any feedback, any content feedback that you got. If there's something you'd like to see if to be included in this report, please leave a comment down below. All right, that'll do it for this update. You guys take it easy, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye guys.